evening, everyone, and welcome to the council meeting for the 9th of February 2021, which I now declare open. Although members of the public can't join us in person tonight, our meetings remain open to the public via the live stream on our website. And I extend a warm welcome to all of those of you who are watching online. As per the current Chief Health Officer's Stay Safe directions, all councillors will keep their face masks on this evening, only removing to speak for clear enunciation and visibility for this broadcast. As chair and to facilitate meeting proceedings, I will have my mask off for the majority of the meeting. On behalf of Mooney Valley City Council, I respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which Mooney Valley is located, the Wurundjeri Woi Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation, and we pay respects to their spirits, ancestors, community members and elders past, present and emerging. We also extend this respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people. We move to item three on the meeting agenda, apologies and leave of absence. Councillors, I have not received any apologies for tonight's meeting and I have not received any requests for a leave of absence. Item four is the confirmation of minutes. So councillors, can I please have a mover and a seconder that the minutes from the council meeting held on Tuesday the 28th of January 2021 be confirmed. Moved councillor Bedio, seconded councillor Tyson. I'll put that to the vote, all those in favour. That's carried unanimously. Item five, declarations of conflicts of interest. Does any councillor have a conflict of interest in any item on the agenda this evening? If not, we move to item six, presentations. And on behalf of council, I would like to congratulate Mr. Peter Maher, who was awarded an OAM for his contribution to education, particularly in the field of mathematics. Peter is a Mooney Ponds resident and began his teaching career at Penley and Essendon Grammar in 1977. As the primary mathematics coordinator at Penley Essendon Grammar School, he has inspired many students and teachers to see the beauty and real life connections in mathematics. Peter is an inspirational teacher and has also written over 32 mathematics books that pose challenging tasks and problem solving activities extending students beyond their daily curriculum. Peter's books are widely used in schools throughout the country and he regularly presents professional learning sessions for teachers. Peter also conducts annual maths workshops for the PEGS parents who thoroughly enjoy his engaging and inspiring sessions. In 2018, Peter was awarded the Outstanding Service Award by the Mathematics Association of Victoria. Aside from his love of maths, Peter loves cricket and football. He's a member of the MCC and a one-eyed Geelong Cats fan. What a good man. Peter is married to Sue, who taught at Lowther Hall for many years, and they have three children, Matthew, Claire and Caitlin. It's an extremely deserving honour for Peter's ongoing service to the education community, so Mooney Valley City Council congratulates him and we are obviously very fortunate for Peter to reside in our city. We would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate any other individuals that may work or reside in our city or who have worked or resided in our city on the honours awarded on Australia Day. Councillors, do we have any other presentations this evening? If not, we will move to item seven, petitions and joint letters. And I'll ask councillors, do we have any petitions or joint letters being tabled tonight? If not, we will move to item eight, public question time. And we have not received any questions from the community for tonight's meeting. Item nine is reports from delegated committees. And we have no reports from delegated committees. So we will move straight to the council reports for this evening. Report 10.1 is a planning application for 8 to 14 Talbot Road, Strathmore 
Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have, um, I'd like to in endorse the officer's recommendations with a couple of changes, if I may read them out. Yes, please do. Uh, so 1B, to read, um, sorry, Mayor, I have not received the latest update for that change. Hold on. Um, Uh, reduced dwellings, uh, dwellings 10 to 19 reduced to double storey and removing necessary bedrooms and car parking as required. And point D, uh, dwellings Mayor, I don't think I need clarification because it's be, I've got an email here, but I can't um, see these correct. So right. could we ask the relevant director if you do have the alternative on your screen to potentially bring it up to assist Councillor Shah? I can't read it. Sorry, it's not. It's different from that. I know it's on the it's on the screen up here, but obviously that Councillor Sharp is underneath the the screen. So Dwellings nine to fourteen and ten to nineteen is that what it is? Sixteen to nineteen. Okay, so point D. Oh, thank you. Dwellings nine to fourteen and sixteen to nineteen to reorientate. Is that correct? The balconies and living areas to the west. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. So I'll just read that back for all councillors. So it's the officer's recommendation with an uh, amendment to 1B, reading dwellings 10 to 19 reduced to double storey and removing necessary bedrooms and car parking as required. And the changes to 1D being dwellings 9 to 14 and 16 to 19 to reorientate the balconies and living areas to the west. Is that correct, Councillor Sharp? Yes. Thank you. Uh, um, Mr. Mayor? Um. Sorry, I've read, okay, I've read, sorry, misinterpreted that. So it's one, the D, one D is dwellings 11 to 14 and 16 to 19. You've just moved the screen to reorientate the balconies and living areas to the west. Councillor Sharp, is that the correct yes, motion? Yes, thank you, sorry. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Adams. Councillor Sharp, would you like to speak to your motion? Thank you, Mayor. Um, the proposal in front of us is probably one of those proposals that um, you really would prefer that we rather didn't see, I guess, but unfortunately it here, is here before us. Um, the original proposal was uh, refused at delegation, by delegation through council, and has since gone to compulsory, a compulsory conference at VCAT. Um, it is a very large site, but the quiet little cul-de-sac that is uh, Talbot Road, Wallace Crescent down there, um, this development is just going to be a huge change down there, let alone, uh, not, not only with traffic, but just, you know, people and, and just, um, it's just so intense. Um, I, I'd, you know, like I said, I'd rather really not see developments like this before us, but um, we do have to decide on it. So uh, as we were there, all ward councillors, Buckley ward councillors were there last night having a look around uh, it certainly didn't make, doesn't make this job any easier, but I think to reduce the double storey, the dwellings that face the existing buildings along that laneway there to double storey and keeping the three storey uh, apartments more toward the north of the site or toward the, you know, the road of the site, the, the um, roadway, uh, I think that it's obviously a better outcome from what we have now. I'm really concerned about the overshadowing and the um, overlooking into existing residences. Um, there's, the laneway there is quite skinny, 
and um, there's certainly not much of a buffer between two potential balconies sitting side by side along you know with each other so the idea um, to reorientate the balconies to the west as well I think will be beneficial um, I thank you for your work mayor on sorting this out um, this alternative out I know that it's it's um, you know it's probably confusing to look at on the on the surface, but if you go out and have a look on site, you can really see and picture the impact that this um, dwelling will have on the area as a whole, and particularly uh, to existing residents. So, um, the you know, I think this is uh, this alternative is probably the best we can we can do to refuse it. We can refuse it, or we could refuse it, but. I think if we refuse it, it's not really giving us a giving BCAT um, a guide or the applicant a guide as to what we'd like to see there. And it's all about trying to, um, you know, I don't want to see just such a big intensive development in such a tiny, in t such a small cul de sac of, of um, Strathmore. So um, I trust, well, this will obviously head to further hearings at BCAT, so I guess we'll have to just see what happens there. But um, yeah, I guess I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Councillor Adams, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, these additional conditions address uh, residents' concerns around visual dominance, surrounding context of this area and traffic impacts in an already congested area. Uh, further reducing additional dwellings to double storey and relocating the balconies away from sensitive spaces will improve the amenity for adjoining properties and reaches a better planning outcome. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Does any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? If not, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? And that is carried unanimously. Item 10.2. Report 10.2 is Interim and Permanent Heritage Controls, C218 and C219 at 118 Glass Street, Essendon. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Mayor. I have an alternative motion, which reads, the council resolves to abandon the proposed amendments C218 and C219 for 118 Glass Street, Essendon. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Adams. Councillor Sharp, would you like to speak to your motion? Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, we often sit around this table and talk about heritage, and I'm certainly very, very supportive of heritage. Um, this, this site that is before us, or this proposal is before us, is um, a different kind. It's it's a different kind of proposition, I think, that we've had in the past. Firstly, it's a post-war building and unfortunately I've been long, around long enough to see what has occurred in the past when we've tried to um, investigate post-war dwellings. Um, but aside from that, this house does certainly have history, um, but it's located right in the heart of the Essendon North structure plan boundary. And that's my main reason for this alternative, because I've also been around long enough to have been involved with trying to save the grand old dwelling on Richardson Street, which was 130 or 40 odd years old. Um, we attempted to uh, get heritage overlay put in place over that site, but failed miserably a number of years ago. And the reason given at that time was because the site was located within a, an activity centre structure plan boundary. Noting though that that site was even just on the periphery of the uh, centre, whereas this site um, on the corner of Glass Street is right in the heart of the centre. Aside from that, uh, I'm sure all of us are aware of Winifred Street and the blight on the landscape down there um, that it is, but uh, it is what it is because it is in the structure plan boundary. Uh, Winifred Street um, is the, um, the border of the structure plan, so um, 118 sits within that and 
has actually been built out by developments that have been built recently. So there's literally an L-shaped uh, apartment block. I don't, can't remember how many, uh, how, how high it is, but it's literally uh, in an L-shape around 118. So um, I'm loath to go down the track and spend uh, a lot of money on something that is most likely not going to end favourably considering our financial position at the moment. I would much rather uh, look to spending our um, funds in a more in a manner in which we could justify. Um, so hence my um, alternative here to to um, abandon it and um, I guess I'll just leave it there for now and, and listen to the debate. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Councillor Adams, do you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I support Councillor Sharp's comments and noting the heritage history of the property, the location is in a prominent position in an activity centre and the surrounding properties are built out. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Does any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? Councillor Hodgson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to um, speak against Councillor Sharp's motion. I think that this is a really rare example of um, a significant property in our neighbourhood and it deserves um, our protection. Um, I suppose in doing that, I'm flagging an alternative motion of the officer's recommendation. Uh, I think this building style has been identified as particularly significant as there are a few post-war era homes in the area. Um, I, I consider that the built form is largely intact and the architectural um, integrity therefore is contributing to the significance as well as the detailed social history of the site. So noting Councillor Sharp's um, concerns about the prospects of success of this uh, application to protect, I think we have um, a really strong example here. I think the Heritage Consultants report shows just how much uh, information there is. And, and as a historian, I think um, I'm quite jealous of the Heritage Consultant who managed to find this wealth of information. It's quite rare, I think, that we have this much detail on the lives of the residents of a home. And I think that's really going to uh, contribute to a, a positive, a potentially positive outcome if we were to pursue the heritage overlay and protection of this particular property. That's not obviously to detract from the significance of the other homes that over the years councils tried to protect, but I do think that it um, bodes well for our chances of success. And I think that this property um, is really worthy of our protection. I don't the fight to protect heritage is incredibly important, um, once gone, gone forever. And I think it's always going to be a tough fight. Um, there's always going to be competing interests, but we need to decide what we think is important and worth fighting for. And I know many conversations I've had with community members, um, heritage is something that they consider to be really important and worth protecting in our neighbourhood. Thank you, Councillor Hodgson. Does any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? Councillor Isa. Sorry, Mayor, can I just query whether I have three minutes or two minutes? Governance? Three. It's three minutes, so if we could adjust the clock, please. Three minutes is yours, Councillor Isa. Thank you. I'll, I'll probably use it all. Um, <laughs> uh, I concur with Councillor Hodgson, and so I'm also um, foreshadowing moving the officer's recommendation. Um, Obviously, from Murnong Ward, we've seen a lot of heritage buildings and a lot of heritage buildings lost over many years. And in all the times I've read heritage um, citations, uh, they're always fascinating, but this one is extraordinarily, um, profoundly um, significant, not only from the architectural aspect, which Councillor Hodgson spoke to, but the cultural and social citations, the importance. Um, it, it's... Uh, I won't um, quote it at length, but obviously this home was built to be bold and prominent. It was built to be a statement house. It was built um, 
to, to exacting standards included stair, curved staircase, secure gun room with mod cons uh, borrowed from Turak and South Yarra at the time, uh, a lawnmower cupboard built into the external kitchen wall. Um, the, the home was built to showcase the architecture of the 1950s and that was its intent and it is intact. And I think it would be grossly remiss of this council not to attempt to uh, to take this opportunity and look obviously there are costs involved but at around um, $13,000 I think it is worth us trying to preserve um, the history uh, and as I say it would be re remiss of us not to make that attempt. There's no argument that can, pos that, that can be made that this property has not been flagged for heritage protection since 2014. It was included in the, um, the heritage uh, gap study of 2014 as, as having um, potential heritage significance. Citations were undertaken in 2017 uh, and in 2018 further work was completed. Um, the citations are comprehensive and um, they provide adequate detail uh, for us to confidently put our case to the Minister. Um, in 2020, so six months before the demolition application was received by Council, or probably five months to be fair, this, th this property was flagged uh, within the, the report that went to council, it was listed as a property in, in the attachment to be identified for inclusion in the heritage overlay. And it is part of the Mooney Valley Heritage Study of 2020 this, and that scope. So I, um, I think it is fair to say that the property owner has been well on notice that the heritage significance of this um, property to the community, may I have a short extension please, yes, Mr Mayor? Yep. Um, the heritage significance has not just been felt by the community, it has been part of a documented, researched, thorough, rigorous processes undertaken by heritage experts within the council and also independent heritage experts who have done work for council. Uh, it is also just. I just wanted to touch briefly on the the, the um, location of the property, and then I'll I'll um, finish there, Mayor. Uh, although it is within uh, DDO ten, which I think is the North Essendon um, Activity Centre Structure Plan, uh, it's also in DDO three, so it, it crosses. It's part of both, and. Within that particular activity centre, there are about 15 heritage um, individual uh, um, sites within that particular centre. So it is of no anomaly to have a heritage site within that um, DDO. Uh, and it's something that we have by way of uh, having such extraordinary heritage within our uh, municipality where we have um, structure plans, there is a crossover with heritage. It's not an excuse for us not to try to preserve those heritage properties. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Isa. Do I have any other councillors wishing to speak to this motion? As there was opposition, Councillor Sharp, would you like to close the debate? Thank you. Um, I'm not too sure what's referred to about heritage sites in activity centre zone because the, uh, the, uh, the current activity centre zone that's there now. Um, well, the reason we couldn't say the Richardson Street property was purely and simply because it was in an activity centre zone and that was on a periphery. Um, so I don't think things have changed that much in regards to how um, government tackles these things when they come up. but. Um, I've got first-hand experience of what happened with Richardson Street and know, know exactly what the reason given to us was. Um, and that property was a very large site with a very, very, very long and distinguished heritage going back to the 140s. So um, notwithstanding, like I said, this property is, you know, 
if it was probably if it was located anywhere else, I personally would have a whole different view and it, I'd be here talking about a whole different conversation. Um, unfortunately, the property is not bold and beautiful anymore as it was when it was built because it's been built out by brick apartment dwellings that are three, four storeys high. So, um, you know, I think we really just need to have a really good think about where this is located, what it's located next to, and how we actually want to see our structure plans progress to a degree as well, because in the opposite side of this street, on the opposite side of this site, um, as soon as that, as soon as that um, business there that's operating out of that site, out of that site now goes, it will be another high rise because it's in the structure plan and we're going to have to decide on that when the time comes. So if you think about how that is going to look and if you have, we've all sat around this table, well, councillors, obviously it's new councillors, but councillors have all sat around this table and worked out the structure plan, the boundaries, worked out the DDOs that go with the structure plans, worked out all the details behind the scenes um, in order to enable these structure plans where we envisage that our higher density dwellings are going to be built in these boundaries to stop um, the higher density dwellings being built in residential areas. So that was really the focus of the structure plans, to get to be able to guide development. Now, if we didn't want this property to be developed, we should have made a note of that in the structure plan at the outset. So we don't have to sit there looking quite embarrassed that we've got this predicament before us now, where we've got a site that's a high profile site in a structure plan with a building on it that could potentially, you know, have that has history behind it. But at the end of the day, we've decided on structure plans years ago and what do we want to see our centres? Do you want to have one, one portion, one, one little site in a boundary which is full of higher density development, one little site just left there when everything else is built around it? I think we just need to be mindful of that too because at the end of the day, we endorse the structure plans and the boundaries. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. I will put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Councillor Adams, Councillor Bedio, Councillor Byrne, Councillor Nation, Councillor Sharp, Councillor Sipek. Those against? Councillor Hodgson, Councillor Isa, Councillor Tyson. That motion is carried. Item 10.3, rebate relief for pensioners during COVID. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Isa. Uh, Mayor, I have a, an alternative. Uh, just with well, it's the officer's recommendation with a point B. Uh, is it sufficient just to read yep. the point B? Uh, I'll, look I'll, for read, the, look, I'll read the it's entire only brief motion. motion it's so brief. let's go for the whole thing. Um, that council resolves to a note the additional cost to council should the council pension rebate be increased from twenty dollars to fifty dollars uh, would be an additional two hundred and twenty-two thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars outside of the approved twenty twenty-one budget and B, consider any further rebates in the 2021-22 budget deliberations. Thank you, Councillor Isa. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Sipek. Councillor Isa, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, this motion arose from a notice of motion late last year um, with some councillors who are no longer uh, um, with, with, around the table. So um, I'm not sure exactly of the history behind the notice of motion, appreciate the work being done by officers to uh, calculate what that additional rebate, should we be in a position to offer it, um, might uh, cost council. Uh, we're probably moving into the latter stage of the 2020-21 budget, and it's, it's difficult at this time to um, accommodate uh, any more large expenditure um, but it may be something that we can certainly consider in our budget deliberations, which are already beginning for our 2021-22 budget, along with other COVID recovery measures that we also might turn our mind to as part of that process. Thank you, Councillor Isa. Councillor Sipek, would you like to speak um, to the Thank motion? you, Mr Mayor. Um, I might be able to give you some history about all this. Um, back in 1988, um, and, and due to consecutive state governments, 
the state government rebate on council rates were 50 per cent. They have not moved since 1988, with consecutive governments completely ignoring this. So council, about eight years ago, took the initiative to try and help out in some way, and we did a $20 rebate, I think, about six years ago, if you, if you recall yourself, Mr Mayor. Um, and then Councillor Sarais, in one of the last meetings, decided to um, make it, uh, move it up to $50, uh, $50 as the rebate. So, so going from a, a state government rebate of 50% uh, of the rate notices, it is down, it is dwindled down now to $120. And next year it'll be even worse and worse. And I think in the, in the very near future, the $50 rebate from council will probably be more money than what the rebate is from the state government. Thank you, Councillor Sipek. Does any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? No, as there was no dissent, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Item 10.4 on tonight's agenda is response to petition, parking outside 961 to 969 Mount Alexander Road, Essendon. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Mayor. I have an alternative recommendation which reads that Council resolves to A, install 2P, 9am to 5.30pm, Monday to Saturday, restrictions outside 961 to 969 Mount Alexander Road. B, advise the primary petitioner of Council's decision and outcome. And C, advise nearby properties of the coming parking changes and where relevant include application forms to help them obtain parking permits. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Councillors, do I have a seconder to that motion? Councillor Adams. Councillor Sharp, would you like to speak to this motion? Thank you, Mayor. Look, these residents have approached us with a petition um, be for a change or for the implementation of parking restrictions outside 961 to 969 Mount Alexander Road. The officers have proposed four hours. Uh, I will note that the petition that came in was specifically for two, noting that I understand uh, why officers have chosen to start the, start the ball rolling, I suppose, with four, and that's because of our, um, our municipal parking strategy. But um, I guess I don't live here. None of us live in this section. Uh, the residents that live here have asked us for two hours Hence my alternative to install two hour parking rather than four because the residents see what happens outside their properties on a daily basis. They see the number of cars that park there all day and there's also a number of businesses located in this area, service businesses, not cafes or anything. Um, and they struggle with the residents, you know, see people struggling to get a park outside, um, you know, and a lot of the people that visit these particular businesses are elderly as well. So um, the residents have asked for it, particularly two, so I'm quite happy to sit here and endorse two hour parking. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Councillor Adams, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thanks, Mayor. I support Councillor Sharp's comments. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Does any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? Councillor Isa. Uh, it's not in Murnong Ward, so it's not an area that I'm entirely familiar with with respect to whether two hours or four hours would be the most appropriate um, parking measure to ensure that there's um, uh, sufficient sort of turnaround of, of parking. Um, however, I do note the advice that we've received around uh, the request from um, the Carolyn Chisholm Society expressing deep concerns about the restrictions and indicating that the uh, two hours would make it difficult for um, uh, volunteers and the community at risk migrant refugee mothers um, parking close to the facility. And I do take that concern um, quite uh, 
seriously, I guess. It's, and if it's something that, that um, while might help one group of residents, um, puts, um, uh, creates quite a difficulty for a vulnerable group of residents, I'm quite concerned about that. And I, I guess I'm more inclined to support the initial four, pair, four hours of parking as a first step, um, which might then uh, allow for some, some trialling of that to see if that could be further restricted, needs to be, sorry, further restricted to two hours or whether that four hours is sufficient to deter the commuter parking, which I think was the initial source of um, uh, concern and, and um, initiated the, the request for some parking restrictions. So. Um, I'm, I think I will not vote, I, I don't think I'll support the two hour parking. I would prefer to see us um, put the four hour parking in place to make sure that nobody was negatively impacted. Thank you, Councillor Isa. Is there any other councillors that wish to speak to this motion? If not, as there was opposition, Councillor Sharp, you may have a right of reply if you wish. Thank you. Um, I probably won't comment on um, uh, submissions from um, businesses or submissions from um, on, on this proposal, I guess. Suffice to say that I'm happy to support the residents who've particularly asked for two hour parking. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. I'll put that motion to the vote. All those in favour? Councillor Adams, Councillor Bedio, Councillor Nation, Councillor Sharp, Councillor Sipek, Councillor Tyson. Those against? Councillor Byrne, Councillor Hodgson, Councillor Isa. That motion is carried. The next report on tonight's agenda is 10.5, Neighbourhood Spirit Awards. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Hodgson. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to move um, a, an alternative motion. It's the officer's recommendation with an amended point E that um, point E reads, appoints all councillors as members of the 2021 Neighbourhood Spirit Delegated Committee. Thank you, Councillor Hodgson. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Bedio. Councillor Hodgson, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mayor. Sorry, thank you, Mayor. Uh, look, this is a, a real honour um, to be able to sit on a committee to recognise um, the hard work that some of our citizens um, contribute to our neighbourhood. And uh, I note that the, the council all felt that they wanted to be able to participate in that process, hence the moving of an alternative um, to allow all councillors to participate. Um, and we look forward to having a look at the nominations, which I believe are still open. Um, so hopefully there's a lot of people out there who are considering, you know, putting forward their neighbours um, for this prestigious honour and we look forward to reading the applications and um, honouring those citizens. Thank you, Councillor Hodgson. Councillor Bedio, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, nothing further to add, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bedio. Does any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? If not, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? It's carried unanimously. Report 10.7 is the proposed road discontinuance and sale of land for the right... Sorry, 10.6. Thank you, uh, Governance. The next report is item 10.6, establishment of a Municipal Emergency Management Planning Committee. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Byrne. Happy to move the officer's recommendation, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Byrne. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Tyson. Councillor Byrne, do you wish to speak to the motion? 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll be fairly brief, but this is to formally establish the Municipal Emergency Management Planning Committee for the Munis Municipal District of Moonee Valley in accordance with amendments to the Emergency Management Act 2013, Part 6, bracket X59 of the Emergency Management Act. Um, um, Officer I want to call him Scott um, Hilditch, is his last name, um, has done an amazing amount of work in this space. Um, I crossed paths with him a lot last year when he was doing a lot with the, um, the COVID response and what was set up in the committee room. And um, this is obviously something that we don't necessarily see, but over the past 12 months, um, unfortunately, but also luckily was able to see um, the work in action. So um, the report is fairly straightforward and not, um, uh, I don't believe, controversial um, at all. So yes, definitely happy to support this um, and the CEO to establish it in accordance with um, the requirements. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Byrne. Councillor Tyson, do you wish to speak to the motion? No. Any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? Councillor Isa. Just briefly, someone did ask me today whether emergency also included climate emergency. And um, while obviously this is a state government, um, this, this committee comes under a state government uh, tool, it's an interesting question because um, probably as a municipality, we, we hadn't really had to deal with many emergencies and to, in, in that sense of um, wide community emergencies until 2020, which was a, a different form of emergency than we're expecting. And it does, I think, um, give us some uh, cause to consider what other sorts of emergencies um, we may face and, and what um, the com a committee such as this may be having to deal with in our community and uh, climate emergency and the changes that um, ensue from that um, may well be very relevant. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Isa. Any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? If not, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? It's carried unanimously. Now, item 10.7 is the proposed road discontinuance and sale of land for the right of way abutting at the rear of 149 to 153 Buckley Street, Essendon. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Hodgson. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to move the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Hodgson. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Isa. Councillor Hodgson, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you. Um, Mayor, this uh, recommendation continues on from a process that was commenced at our meeting back in the 8th of December last year, um, resolving to advertise the proposed discontinuance and follow the, the required statutory process. Um, as the report outlines, this was advertised, it received no responses either for or against. And so the recommendation is now to complete that process by selling the discontinued road to the adjacent landowner. Thank you, Councillor Hodgson. Councillor Isa, would you like to speak to the motion? No, any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? If not, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? It's carried unanimously. Report 10.8 is Delegations of Council, Update 2021. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Isa. Move the officer's recommendation, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Isa. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Bedio. Councillor Isa, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, look, delegations are an interesting um, area because obviously, uh, the council, the nine of us around the table, uh, don't perform all the duties of council. And many of those duties are performed by our CEO, um, and very competently so. Um, there, and beyond that, there are further delegations to other staff. And it is quite interesting to read all um, 100 pages or so of the delegations because it does give an appreciation of the vast work that council does and the number of staff who do have to have um, do have to be delegated powers from various um, legislative instruments to perform those various 
responsibilities. Um, and so it, it, looking through all of those tasks, I think, does give an appreciation of the, the, um, the wide uh, powers of council, but also the wide responsibility of council. And while at the end of the day, the nine of us around the table have to take some governance responsibility for the way these delegations are exercised and the way our CEO manages the exercise of that delegation, um, it's, you know, we do rely on having a strong organisation and uh, diligent and competent and talented staff to exercise all these very many responsibilities that our community relies on. So it is in fact a a, um, a very important document. Thank you, Councillor Isa. Councillor Bedio, wish to speak to the motion? Any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? If not, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? It's carried unanimously. We now move to item 11, notices of motion. And we have one notice of motion on tonight's agenda. So I call on Councillor Sipek to present his notice of motion titled Avondale Heights Police Station. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, take notice that this meeting of council is my intention to move the council resolve just to write a letter to the Minister for Police the member for Nidri, the member for Essendon and all Western members of parliament to clarify that the Avondale Heights police station will not be permanently closed and staff transferred to other stations. Thank you, Councillor Sipek. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Mm -hmm. Councillor Bedio. Councillor Sipek, would you like to speak to your notice of motion? Yes, um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, the community got um, very concerned when uh, staff got transferred up to the border from Avondale Heights to, the, um, to patrol the borders from the Avondale Heights Police Station, which meant services closed at five o'clock. And uh, the community understood that and they were quite happy with that. Now that the um, border closure has stopped and there are open borders, all staff have returned to their normal functions. Unfortunately, the police station is still closed at five o'clock. Now, I don't know in which country criminal activities only clock on from nine till five, but uh, you know, policing needs to be policed 24 hours a day. And that's what the community are asking for. They want a surety that this police station will not be closed as it hasn't had any upgrades or renovations in a very, very number of years. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sipek. Councillor Bedio, do you wish to speak to this motion? Any other councillor wish to speak to this motion? No? I will put that to the vote then. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Item 12 is urgent business, and I'll call on any councillor wishing to raise an item of urgent business? No? We now move to confidential reports, and there are no confidential reports this evening. So that concludes the business on tonight's agenda. We thank everyone for watching online, and I now declare this meeting closed. Good evening.